Through picture and film, the world has watched David grow up in his sterile bubble, never able to emerge to know the feel of human touch. David's body lacks the cells necessary to defend against infection, so even exposure to germs that cause the common cold could be fatal. Although other youngsters with David's problem, severe combined immune deficiency, have been saved by bone marrow transplants from matching donors, David had no close match, and for years that avenue was closed. Then, in 1981, Boston doctors working with monoclonal antibodies, a substance tailored to kill the T-cells that cause rejection, successfully transplanted mismatched marrow into this young girl. Other successes followed, successes David's family had hoped for. David's sister donated the bone marrow, which was treated three times over a 12-hour period to rid it of the rejection-causing T-cells. Finally, all was ready. David himself took an active part. He uh, assisted in putting in the IV into his arm, holding the tape for the nurse. He assisted in putting the blood pressure cuff on and sitting in the right location. Dripping the bone marrow into David's body took just 10 minutes. He had no adverse reaction. It's abnormal to live in a protected, sheltered environment for one's entire life. And if there's a chance, a good chance of escaping, I think we should take it. David was conscious and alert and making jokes to the last. And talking with his physicians and nurses. Last October, he underwent a highly experimental bone marrow transplant that he hoped would cure him. He wanted to be like other children his age and run free. Ironically, that same treatment probably killed him. This was a complication, I believe, of the bone marrow transplant. David lived longer than anyone else with his disease. And doctors say his life was of medical significance. But his greatest contribution to medicine came with his death. What doctors found in an autopsy this morning may lead to medical breakthroughs. The autopsy showed David had numerous so abnormal growths, tumors in his stomach, lungs, spleen, and intestines. But, but in his death, they think questions might be answered about the body's immune system, how it works or doesn't, and how it could be encouraged to fight diseases like cancer. According to Dr. Scherer, David knew he was dying, and today, the man who tried to save his life had to talk to the press about the end of David's life. And by the way, David isn't the bubble boy's real name. Since his birth, his family has protected his privacy. Baylor Hospital today continued that, giving no information about David's family or friends. They say David lived with dignity and died with dignity. Dan White, CNN, Houston.